Hey everyone, and welcome to another XM tutorial. Today, I want to show you what in my opinion is the best Overwatch configuration for XM Apex in terms of mouse accuracy and button bindings. Also, in this video I will show you how to correctly set up your Overwatch in game settings, so your XM Apex experience does not suffer from using the wrong values in there. First off, we start by making sure our XM Apex has the latest game config for Overwatch. We do that by going into the options in the top right of your XM Manager. Go to Global Settings, and then press the Force Games Download button. Your XM will now download the latest Smart Translators for every game profile. The Smart Translators of your existing game configs will remain untouched. Depending on how fast your internet is, this may take a few seconds. So please, be patient. Once that is done, head into the Global Settings options again, and click the box next to Expert Configuration. You can now adjust your XM polling rate. If your mouse supports 1000 Hz, I strongly recommend you to set both, your mouse and your XM to 1000 Hz as this will greatly increase the responsiveness of your mouse movements. If you experience mouse stutter with the 1000 Hz mode, reduce the XM pulling rate, or use the smoothing feature which is something I will explain in detail in another tutorial video. Now, hit the save button and restart your XM Apex so the polling rate changes will be active. Once you have restarted your XM Apex, click on the options in the top right, and press the new configuration button. Search for the Overwatch game profile, you can either scroll through the list or use the search bar at the top like I do. After you have picked it, you can choose your console at the bottom. This tutorial works for both the Xbox and the PlayStation. Your XM will now show you a pop-up window, in which you can learn about the required in-game settings for Overwatch. If you already closed it, you can reopen the pop-up by clicking the button in the bottom right of the game picture. Press the Yes button, and you will be forwarded to the XM forum. Here you can find the in-game settings that your XM needs in order to give you the best possible mouse movements. Please, do not use any other settings. Also, by the time you watch this video, Overwatch might need different in-game settings than those that you can see in this video. In this case, please use the settings shown in the XM forum. If future changes have an impact on this tutorial, I will of course upload a new one with updated settings. Now, let's head into the game to change its settings. I will now adjust those to match the one shown in the XM forum. In the end of this video, I will also show you what in my opinion are the best aim assist and crosshair settings. Please be careful while you adjust your in-game options, so no accidental error will mess up your mouse movements. Once the in-game settings are correct, we can go back to the XM Manager. Click the Config Edit button in the top left to start the editing menu. The first thing we do is to change the configuration light. Pick the color you like the most from the list. I will go with blue in this tutorial. Whenever my XM now shows a blue light, I will know that my Overwatch game profile is running. On the right side of the configuration color, you can find the hotkey option. I will use the F1 key for this. When I want to load my Overwatch XM profile, all I have to do is to press F1 on my keyboard and the config will be active. Now let's swipe to the right in your Overwatch XM configuration, this will open up the next menu. Alternatively, press the arrow on the right side of your app just like I do. First, adjust the mouse sensitivity to a level that you feel comfortable with. If you are unsure what mouse sensitivity works best for you, I highly recommend you to watch my tutorial video on how to find your perfect XM sensitivity. You can find a link to it in the video description. My preferred XM sensitivity for Overwatch is 115. If you end up with a higher or lower value, then this is absolutely fine. Your sensitivity can differ to mine as both the polling rate you use, as well as the mouse DPI you run with have an influence on your XM sensitivity. For example, I use 1000 Hz and 3200 DPI. Under your XM sensitivity, you can find the advanced options for your mouse movements. 
I recommend you to not adjust anything in there with the exception of smoothing. If you experience mouse jitter, then start with a smoothing value of around 7, and slowly increase it until the mouse stutter is gone. In general, any changes in these advanced settings will reduce the quality of your mouse accuracy. In my opinion, the Overwatch mouse movements are the best when you keep the advanced settings on default. I will upload more tutorial videos to further explain what each of those advanced settings do, and in which scenarios it might be a good idea to use them. The next thing we do is to customize our button bindings. Here you can either copy my button layout that you can see right now, or you go with your own one. My only recommendation here is to place all of your Overwatch ability buttons to keys, that you can press while moving your character around. This includes jumping, crouching, or your ultimate button. For example, the Q button is not a good idea to be used for your ultimate. The reason is that you can not walk to the left side by pressing the A key on your keyboard, and on the same time press Q to activate your ultimate. Instead, use a button that you can click comfortably while moving your character in the game. At the very bottom of your button bindings, you can find the option to switch into the secondary button bindings. Here you can bind every controller action a second time. Make use out of this if there are actions you would like to bind twice. For example, in games like Destiny, you can use this to bind L1 and R1 to one keyboard or mouse button to activate your ultimate. Once your button binding is complete, hit the save button in the top left. Your Overwatch XM game configuration is now complete. Since there are also characters such as Widowmaker or Anna, who have a zoom functionality, we will now create a dedicated Overwatch XM game profile for those. Go into the editing menu of the Overwatch configuration that we have just created. Once you are in there, open the settings below the profile color, and press the copy button there. Now, close this Overwatch configuration, and press options in the top right. Click on the create config button again, and search for the Overwatch profile just like you did before. Pick your console on your XM will launch the new configuration. Open the configuration editing mode, and press the paste button below the profile color option. Your new Overwatch configuration will now be 100% identical to the one we just copied. The first step now is to change the profile color to something else, I will go with yellow this time. After that, change the name of the configuration to Overwatch Zoom. The next thing we do is to pick a different hotkey for this XM profile. I will use the F2 key for this tutorial. This will allow me to instantly switch between the two XM Overwatch game profiles by pressing F1, or F2, depending on which hero I want to play. Once that is done, swipe three times to the right to get into the Auxiliary 1 config. Alternatively, press the arrow on the right side three times. Tick the box to enable this sub-configuration, so we can start to make the necessary adjustments. In the middle you can now find the activation method. The activation button has to be the same one that you have bound to zoom in your main configuration. In my case this is the right mouse button. If you are unsure which button you use to zoom in your main configuration, then swipe back to it and check your button bindings. Now, the last step is to adjust the XM zoom sensitivity, and your configuration is done. My preferred zoom sensitivity is 100. Again, you can use the XM sensitivity tutorial that I mentioned earlier to find your perfect zoom sensitivity. Save your adjustments with the button in the top left and press exit. You can find both configuration codes in the video description, in case you want to copy and paste those into your manager. Now, in the end of this video, I want to show you what aim assist and crosshair settings I recommend to use. In general, I use an aim assist strength of 100. More important than the aim assist strength is in my opinion the aim assist window. Here I use a value of 30, which is in my opinion the sweet spot between the size of the character's hitbox, and the point where the aim slowdown occurs due to the size of the aim assist window. With a window size of 50, or even 70, 
It can get really hard to move your crosshair on an opponent, as the aim assist bubble is much larger than a character's hitbox. The slowdown can already occur several centimeters before you even reach the character, which for example is really bad for your flick shots. A value of 30 allows you to build up muscle memory much easier, which will greatly help you to increase the accuracy of your prediction shots. With these settings, you will also be able to cut into the aim assist bubble more easily. This is very helpful when you want to switch between different targets. In addition to that, you'll get less distracted by the aim assist when several opponents are close to each other. Of course not every character benefits from aim assist, for some heroes like Farah, you might want to set those to zero. For my crosshair options, I use the following settings. Crosshair colors and sizes are a personal preference thing, therefore you should only take my crosshair as a suggestion to what you might want to use for yourself. If you liked this video hit the like button or even subscribe, let me know if you would like to see more of these tutorials in the comments down below, and I will maybe see you in the next one. Until then, enjoy your XM experience.